Um, welcome everyone to the Thursday, oh no, yeah, Thursday, March 14th meeting of the Community Services Advisory Board. Um, we have one new member, Patricia, um, who's here. And do you know everybody yet? Okay, so want to do a very quick um, go around the room, you know, how long you've been on the meet, on the committee, etc. And Emily, we're going to start with you. Uh, howdy, my name is Emily Loader. I'm the vice chair slash first supporting secretary. Um, and I've been on the committee for uh, almost a year. I am Rick Murphy. I'm a member of the committee. I've been on for a few terms, actually. We met Todd Suki thereafter. Thank you. Amanda Doherty. I think it's been a year, but my months tend to run together. <laughs> Hi, Ellen Coughlin Quinn, about two years. Um, and Trish Brigham, we met. Um, and I, this is the start of my second term, so three years. Mark Dillon, probably 20 years. <laughs> And Roger, you're next. Roger Shabbat. I've uh, been on the board, I think, three terms or two terms and working the third now. And uh, you got a, I got something to report. Uh, the the beach has uh, two male uh, piping plovers. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Um, okay. <laughs> Patricia, do you, this is your first term. Do you want to? introduce yourself a little bit and uh sure um i've been a resident of scarborough since 2018 um i live over in the old millbrook area with my husband and four kids um um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the November meeting? I have a comment on the minutes. Okay. I see in the item five, we did hear from Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee, and he, Mike Slavin was kind enough to come in and talk to us, give us some updates. But I, I see in here that there's a, a comment that says, should parking fees go back into the maintenance and infrastructure of parking lots? Ideally, yes, but I need point. I think we should clarify that that was not a deliberation of this committee. That was a comment that we received from an outside entity. And I think it's important for us to reflect that we, we haven't debated this or talked about this yet. Right. So, I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else, any other comments on changes? I've updated that in the minutes and we'll send an update, uh, an updated copy to Toby. Thank Move you. to approve minutes as amended. Second, sir. Emily, did you second? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Thank you. Um, okay, moving on to citizens' comment. Um, and look, do we have any citizens who are attending that yep. would like to comment? Hand up. <clears throat> Penny, welcome. Thank you. So I've I have uh, been. Uh, following your meetings, and I attended the last meeting via Zoom because I'm in Florida, but my name is Penny Whitney Asdorian. I live in Scarborough. I'm a resident up there, and uh, I'm also an employee of community services as I work the beaches in the summer. And I just wanted to come, I believe, unless you schedule a special meeting, that this would be the meeting where you would be uh, voting on recommendations regarding uh, parking fees um, at the three beaches and um, making recommendations to the, the town council about that because your next meeting is not until May, which is dangerously close to us opening the beaches. So um, I just want to kind of repeat what I said last year. It's like the parking fees, the $5 parking fee is really not sufficient to pay for the facilities and the services that people are using first thing in the morning. Um, while I was working, I talked with the staff and the staff was overall in favor of raising the fees, but they thought $10 and $20 was most appropriate. Every person that's on staff thought the $30 was just not a good thing on the weekends. Um, they raised the to $30 only on the weekends, didn't include the holidays, which didn't make any sense. And the people that really got hurt 
by doing that. And the people who were most disadvantaged were working families, young working families who only, they have the weekends off and they only get the opportunity to bring their kids to the beach two or three times. And the $30 was just cost prohibitive. Um, I know that in after the last meeting, somebody asked a question after I spoke about they we tracked the turnarounds and they wanted to know if people turned around because they didn't want to wait in line or were they turning around because of the price. The cars that turned around that we counted were cars that waited in line, got up to us where they could pay and chose to leave because of the $30 fee. Um, I can tell you how much I enjoyed working the beaches. I am looking forward to coming back to the beach. I had a great time. Um, we've got a lot of retirees, I think, that are working the beaches now, which, you know, most of us are town residents. We care greatly about the beaches and the impression that we're leaving. And um, happy to answer any questions if you have any. Do you want to comment, Todd, about whole discussion on beach fees. Yeah, Penny, thanks for your comments and, and uh, again, bringing them forward. I think when we get to the discussion on kind of the beach environment piece, I'm not sure if we're gonna end up discussing fees, that that'll be a decision of this committee when we get to it. Um, but all your comments are dual noted. I think the last time we met, there was a lot of discussion around what are our goals with raising beach fees and what other things that are going on. And so um, again, trying to be able to put data uh, there's a lot of other factors that go into it. So uh, again, appreciate it. And we get to that point, we'll decide whether um, you guys want to discuss beach, fee beach fees this year, or are there are other things that you need more research on. So until we get to that, that comment. So uh, just, again, just being transparent, not sure if we're going to get to a beach fee discussion, Penny. So thank you. Thank you for your comments, Penny, and also for your service. I know that's a, can be a, sometimes a challenging job. Yeah. He's a great employee. So we appreciate your service. Um, is there anyone else in the audience that cares to speak? Seeing none, we're going to move do. on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 I, the only thing I haven't commented on that is that when these cars try to um, turn around and get out, it, it ought to be mentioned to them that to, to buy a $40 family uh, fees is where they should be doing it, and then they wouldn't have to pay anything to go with their kids when they have time. Yeah, we'll get into that. Not to cut you off, right? We'll get into that when we get into the discussion. Okay. All right. Next, we just wanted to do a quick review and approval of the committee goals that we had set. Um, so I don't know if I can share my screen. We've got to do this again. You all know that I'm not. I think we, Emily and I, had chatted a little bit about this. We don't see any just change we're still working on the goals but we wanted to have an official vote that we would keep chugging along on them um no we yeah yeah there we go we had if you recall we had broken them down into implementation over zero to three and rank ordered them or prioritized them from zero to three years the community center the facilities working off the consultants report um, we had done uh, security enforcement, volunteer recruitment, which we all talked about. It, I mean, it's a it's a fairly comprehensive list, and we just wanted to take an official vote since we're in 2024 that we still felt those were important. And I think that other agenda items that are on here sort of fall into those categories. If anyone has any comments or questions? Patricia, have you had a, uh, received a copy of this? Yes. Okay. I move to repeat the same goals from this year. My only concern is that there's so many and we meet six times a year. I mean, and this is great. And we've, you know, broken it down to immediate and, you know, time frames. but I just feel like it's still a lot. And should we, I don't know if we should spend more time just choosing one or two or three, but I'll, I don't know. It feels like we never get anywhere. We only discuss, have the same conversations no action and I don't know how to move forward. What do you think that if we were to have less things under each category, 
then having, let's say, the four categories would still make sense, but focus on more narrow items within each one, or two, just kidding, there's five. Uh, <laughs> Okay, you're still scrolling, yeah. but that's not enough. Yeah. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is, right. you know, do we think we pick three and then say the other ones we spread out kind of more into the future? Or do you think we could narrow what we're accomplishing in each section, but still address each section? Or do we, I, I, I thought we had narrowed it down to three. I thought we had to. Um, I, I would recommend keeping all of them there, right. but focus on yeah. one, two, <laughs> I thought the three that we had discussed was support of the community center was yeah. number one. Yeah. And that's more, again, getting updates and being involved when that piece and part comes. Yeah. I thought the second one was uh, researching and studying beach environment and how to approve that holistically. Yeah, which we're doing. Yeah, policies and procedures. And then I thought the third one was the recruitment and uh, mm -hmm. community partner developed liaison piece. Yep. I think those yep. were your three top. Yeah, okay, great. That makes me feel better. Then. Because the maintenance mm -hmm. and stuff, it's like I share with you and suggestions and you kind of this, that, okay, Todd, go in that direction. Right. Um, same thing <laughs> with um, programming. You know, we've, we've talked about those and staff development. Those are really more on me. And it's, I guess it would be my role to come back to you and say, hey, we're, we're working on this. What do you think about that? Or this project, should we hold a public meeting? Should we not? Can we just make a decision here, like being that sounding board? So I think those were your top three, if I remember correctly. Great. So Emily, for the purposes of the minutes, can we... I would suggest, and maybe someone has to make a motion on this, that we continue to use the, the full list as our guide, but emphasize or re-emphasize that the focus areas are the beach environment, which we started to work on, the community, community center. Community, so community center is number one, and we kind of are working on that. Yep, but that's moving. Um, and the beach environment. Is two. And, and the then volunteer recruitment. Volunteer recruitment, recruitment which we have not done anything on yet. We started to talk about that at the last meeting, but we haven't made we it. We ran on that's a that's a singular topic. To take that, so. so perhaps that could be moved to depending on where we go with the beach environment yep. today. That could be our May yep. agenda item: volunteer recruitment. I think that would play in well because we might be able to have some conversation with schools for the end of the school year to be kind of ready for September when everybody comes back and what partners and resources we want to team up with. You guys always talk about trying to get out of these silos, and so. Right. You might be able to hit those objectives in May and then build it out to be ready for September. Give yourselves three or four month working months. Okay, so do we need a motion to approve that? Do you think it would be helpful? I think it would be helpful for the records. If Art wants to rescind his motion, make a new one. I, I motion to accept last year's goals as this year's with the focus on those three emphasized. Anybody want to second that? I second that. All in favor? All comments? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Roger, you in favor of that? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to the budget overview. Todd? I, I will try. Everybody should have it in front of them. I've kind of dialed things down, knowing we've got some other big topics tonight to kind of wade through. So last meeting, I shared to do kind of my objectives and high-level stuff as far as... Um, more philosophical stuff. This is just more just on a pair, pair down version. So um, you'll see that last year, 2024, our net budget asked to the town was $829,000. Um, and then we had a brief discussion, the parks budget net was 827. So most of our budget is self-sufficient. Um, sorry, sorry, clarification. Yeah, yeah. Uh, total, um, like that you're looking to spend on everything? So or? total expenditures, so last year, total expenditure was 3,600, that top number. Mm -hmm. Total revenue we brought is 200. 200. Oh, sorry, that's the, yeah. okay. And that's the net. And yeah, so yeah, what yeah. I try to do is let people know when they say, hey, your budget budget is this, but because we're fee-based, it gives us a lot more flexibility. And it's a challenge sometimes because we're going through budgets now and they're like, well, you didn't spend this. I'm like, well, I didn't have as much staff as we usually do, so I didn't spend it. And then also the revenue doesn't reflect it as well. And so those things, sometimes it's a push and pull. Um, but again, the whole parks piece is that we don't make a lot of revenue off the parks. And so that's really a, a tax burden um, that we do. And so when we look at things we have to adjust, it's kind of, that's what we kind of look at. So for this year, um, council goal has been 5% net increase to the town budget as a whole. Um, before it was three ex three percent expenses. This year it's five percent net. So, um, so when I went through my budget, 
that's how I look at mine anyway. So this year I proposed a budget of 3.8 million, revenue 2.9, uh, a net increase, a net ask to the taxpayer of $897,000 and change, which is a net increase of about $68,000, which is a 3.3% increase for us. So, um, So unless something else changes, sometimes later in the game, we get other fee projections and other, you know, fees go up and revenue projections go up, or sometimes we get a better price on something and the expenses go down, but we're just at the starting line for our budget. Uh, Town Manager Hall has to have his budget presentation at the end of March. We meet in front of Finance Committee mid-April. And so when we meet in May, I should have a better picture of what's mm -hmm. really a functional budget. Um, so just for your own knowledge, what that equals is that you know, we're 70%, 77% self-funded. We ask 20%, 3% of our budget comes from taxation, again, which like 95% of that is the parks. Um, you will see in a note below that, um, based on some of our goals that you guys have set and some of the master plan items in the budget, I proposed a full-time parks position, okay. parks ranger, and I proposed a full-time rec programmer. You know, those will be kind of caveats on the side of the budget. Um, as Tom hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Yep. Full time park ranger yep. and full time uh, rec, uh, rec program. program. Yep. For like any genre we decide. Just, yep. Okay. Yep. And so the goal with both of these is that, um, and I'll go a little more when we talk in the beach environment, but it's two needs. You know, we're at a pretty strong programming capacity. And so if we want to do more stuff and fill those gaps, that takes more people. Um, and then the park ranger piece is really about education enforcement for some of the things that we're going to talk about later in the agenda. Um, uh, so we do have our first park ranger part-time add out. I think we have two applicants already. So that's fantastic for the first time. And so we'll be able to kind of build this program out and go from there. Um, just some quick highlights. Um, again, we're going to work on over the year of having some policies that I talked about last time, just so when we sit down and when I talk to council, um, about sustainability, certain things um, that we have to do, capital investment and equity. One of the things I'm most excited about for the capital improvement budget this year is that for the first time, we're going to mark out all of our submissions, but they're going to be listed as um, replacement or repair, new initiative, uh, new service. So when council looks at it, it's just not this giant number. Mm -hmm. It feels like an abyss. We can say, okay, we have X amount of million in repairs and replacement. And then you can choose what you want to do in the next two buckets. But the, the first bucket is really about maintaining what we have. Um, and then if they choose not to maintain what we have, then we have to talk about, do we keep it in service? Do we sell it? What do we do? Do we divest from that, that service level? So I think it's going to allow us to make better decisions um, moving forward. And it doesn't won't seem some cumbersome either as far as just a big number. Um, uh, again, planning on trying to address as many of the master plan items, which is pretty broad. Um, just some high level numbers for you. Operationally, we've added so many community events that we don't break even with. So we raised that budget by 10 grand this year, which is community good. Um, our intergenerational budget is up $96,000 as a whole and changed. Um, some of that is, is full time staff. We have three, four full time staff in that division. But as you see in the note, it's $59,000 increase just in part-time summer camp. So that's the major of that number. Um, uh, we sh we're we up to, I want to say 340 kids for summer camp register this year. When we wow. were 310 last year. And so again, that's staffing. And so we'll make more revenue on the other side to offset it, but that's the that number sticks out with you. Intergenerational, you've told us this a thousand times, is targeted at specific groups like kids, seniors. Yeah, so under the intergenerational, it's childcare, summer camp, teen camps and programs, and then the active adult senior programs. Okay. So those four staff handle all that. Um, in the parks budget, there's a, an increase of 65,000. Um, we are having a lot of um, maintenance issues with Eastern Trail right now due to the storms. Um, the section between Pine Point parking lot and um, the public works um, at a, it's, we figured it out at about an eight and a half foot tide right now. It's completely covered in water. So we're projecting, we've had numerous 12 and 13 footers. And so um, we're working through some permitting right now to kind of strengthen those rock walls and make them bigger. 
um, but just it's going to take more servicing material to keep that. So that went from a two thousand dollar line to a ten thousand dollar <laughs> line. So that's why that one's up eight. And then out of a million dollar budget, contracted services about twenty grand. It's just the way of the world right now. Every service has gone up. Um, under the beaches division, uh, big uh, notable increase of fifty six overall um, this year. Um, some of you may recall, we used to be in charge of the co-op, parking, bathrooms, trash. We gave away the parking responsibilities, the PD, about four years ago. Um, but we kept the trash. And last year, we picked the bathrooms back up. And so we didn't have staff for that. We absorbed it in our operational budget. So this, this um, $20,000, a 16 in the co-op, is that contracted cleaning. That's porta parties in the off-season and bathroom cleanings with a contracted service for, you know, April to October. Um, so we added that in the budget to reflect that role. Uh, and then again, contracted services for that budget is up about 20 grand as well. That's bathroom cleanings, trash services, um, every fix it, blowing out drains. <clears throat> it's all kind of in that realm. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah, before go you go on. Alex isn't here. Yes. And Amanda's leaving at 630. Yep. I just noticed that they're further on in the in theory, you could go till 6.30 in terms of your time. Do you have a, can we switch gears? I wouldn't be able to give an update because of the timing of the meetings. It would have to be Todd or Alex. Okay, yeah, yeah fine. So, so I'm sorry. I just nope, nope, realized I you were leaving. Nope, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Sorry, Todd. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. I think that was. Uh, dumb question. Is your entire budget open to the, and available to the public? Uh, yeah, it's all on the drive. Well, it's last year's is all up on the drive. So if you go to the town website mm -hmm. and you click on, there's a, when you get to the middle of the town webpage, there's hot buttons, projects, that sort of stuff. There's a budget button right there. And when you click on it, all of last year's budget, every CIP project, every town to budget is all right there, LinkedIn. So like where you have the positions listed of like how much people would make, are people able to see that? Well, um, so those two numbers, yeah. those are all in. That's benefits. That's So that number you see like for the parks coordinator, that 86? Yeah. When we do it in the budget, because it's a proposed position, mm -hmm. they put it in its own separate line and it's wages, FICA, Medicare, and all the health and dental. And so if it doesn't get funded, they pull it out. But is that is that public entity for someone to go in and see that? Uh, just, well, it's just the whole, number. yes, that would be in the budget. Yes. Yeah, and then okay. if it gets passed, mm -hmm. it then gets moved to like last year, we got two parks workers. It was a proposed number of 132. This year, it gets moved into the full-time staff line. So that full-time staff line is now like $400,000. So like public can go in and see like how much is spent on salaries. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And they can see capital okay. projects and then revenues as well. Okay. Why do you ask, Emily? Um, I, it's, I think it's weird to me in my head, like if, if someone is a Fire. park, if, if they're a park ranger, or, you know, and they say, well, I work for the town, like, you could essentially go into the website and see how much that person makes, but I guess that's a given because they are this, a public yeah, person yeah. anyway, so they kind of give up that, right? right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you'd have to do a little bit of digging. Like, you could go in there and see uh, director mm -hmm. and know that's my salary, but when you go to parks, it's six people. Mm -hmm. so you would have to know there's six people and divide it and get an average. You couldn't click on that link and it would show you uh, oh, Scott and Casey and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's certain singular positions you could tell, but others are lumped. So, but again, it's all public knowledge. It's I think that's the part where yep. I, I just, I'm, I'm like team nonprofit. So this is yep. a whole, yeah, <laughs> that's like a whole other thing to make. It's a good question. I should have so, said that's an all in number. It's not an $86,000 salary. Definitely. It's a $20,000 benefit package and like in Medicare. Um, on the revenue side of thing, we talked about it last meeting. Uh, we met with my, all my staff and my programming we evaluated summer camp and child care, um, and all those are going up in one way or another. Um, but we've also looked, especially because we're looking at more of our indirect fees. Right now, we have a lot of full-time staff involved that we've never mm -hmm. built into the budget. But if I were to lose a staff person, I'd have to find a part-time to say, hey, can you do that, that role? And so um, we've kind of built in some of those indirect costs. Like we've never budgeted the $30,000 a year I pay the school for rent. We put that in the overall budget this year to get back just so it's a realistic piece. Luckily, nothing's going up huge, so it's not a big effect. We were in a, we, not saying we did it arbitrarily, but we weren't that in depth in that price setting. And so that's kind of where, so in the future, when you guys say, hey, 
what are we doing? I can say, well, we've gone up, we're at a 2% increase. We can look a little more at that and then also try to do some cost recovery. We talked about it briefly last year in the budget presentation, but if something is exclusive, summer camp and there's a limited amount of seats or a senior trip where there's only 12 seats on the bus, we're gonna get full recovery of those costs. If it's something like a community event, it may cost us $500 and we have 100 people, we may only charge $2 to come. We might have a sponsor or it just might be, that's why the community budget went up. It just might be because we're doing it for free. Some things are just community good, less recovery, exclusive items, full recovery plus. And that's kind of our programming model. Mm -hmm. um, so again, just kind of offsetting um, summer camp wage. That's what we're thinking about. We should get an increase in, in wages to offset uh, the summer camp before. Um, yes, that's not our usual number, but we profited anyway. So we thought, you know, we looked at what our competitors are, are charging and didn't want to be outside of that. Uh, youth programming, that's an increase in programming, but there's uh, also increases in the revenue side and the uh, expense side because we're doing more youth programming. Um, and the same thing with the T programming. That'll be a new revenue. Last year, we did two chain trips a week during the summer. This year, we're doing three. We had good success with it. So um, that should be a new impact for us. And the meeting that I was watching, uh, some of you were watching in, um, Autumn, our planning director, is going through um, developing impact fees. We've always had a rec impact fee, but it was very loosely worded and it wasn't really based on updated numbers. So she's gone through and it's in the ordinance review right now and then it'll eventually get to council and finance. But what it would do is provide us about $2 million in revenue over 10 years. And what it is, is that when somebody builds a new house, the contractor would have to say, okay, for every bedroom, we get $400. And then that unfortunately gets passed over to whomever is paying for it. But you expect that being new impact to parks and beaches. And so we'll get that. So at the end of next year, when I do my budget, I'll be able to go to Tom Hall, the town manager, and say, hey, this is, def this is a new initiative. We're adding a new playground. We're building a new park. We're doing this fits the role of impact fees. Right. So that's. Do they do that for the school? They do in the school impact fee. Yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and is it, is it only new residential construction? Uh, yeah, it doesn't affect commercial. Commercial gets done on what is it? Um, we don't receive it directly, but it's not impact fees. It's um, another term and I can't remember, but nothing that comes back directly to us. Um, they do more, like they pay for traffic studies and that kind of more hits the road because people are traveling to them versus identifying that they're going to a beach or to a, so just a different little model, but that's exciting for us. Hopefully it'll get finalized this spring. So we'll have that vehicle. Um, so one of the questions I have, and I know some people have to leave, so I'll, um, I'll, I'll go through this really quick, but we've got about $300,000 there in quest for vehicles and equipment. We didn't do a lot of that last year. And so this year is kind of a catch up year for us. Um, I have a placeholder in the budget for the initiative, a $50 million community center. We can talk about that update when we go there, but that's coming along and we'll see where we land in the budget. Also in the master plan is talking about expanding athletic fields. I'm, I'm saying this honestly, I put it in there as an identifier, but I put a million dollars for land purchase for athletic fields. I'm fully confident with the rebound and everything going on that'll get pushed off, but at least allows us to have the conversation to say, this has been identified this is a need. And so um, to start those conversations, um, there's $21,000 in miscellaneous requests. Like we've got bleacher replacement on the 114 field, some picnic tables. And so there's kind of those miscellaneous projects. Um, uh, and then the big one for me is I've got $100,000 in the budget for uh, pickleball courts. And I've got $250,000 in the budget for skate park. And this is where I need some opinion and some advice from you guys. So presently our skate park. Are we talking um, like the ice skating park? No, or the, no, and, the and park. Memorial Park. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Because regarding ice skating, I got in that um, uh, about $25,000 of budget. I'm proposing buying a small, an ice rink kit, you know, the portable kits, because the one we have now won't freeze with the climate. We're just putting water and time into something. So it's like 110 by 70. It's a pretty big portable rink that we'll try to see if that works. Um, no, I'm this is the skate park behind town hall and public yeah. safety building. So mm -hmm. last year we budgeted $100,000 to take off the implements, resurface with pavement, put them all back. Well, when we got into that project, the skate company was 
you're not getting that stuff apart. They were going to charge us forty thousand dollars to put it all back together. Well, and they can't guarantee me that when it goes back together, it's not going to be twisted or turned. It's twenty plus years old. Um, and so started thinking about trying to meet some of the other master planning issues we're having or challenges or asks. So I propose in the budget to find another place on campus to build a cement pad and put new skate park implements on it. That way, the challenge with pavement is those things are so heavy, they sink. And then you've got, you know, your pavements here and the implements down here. So when kids hit the ramp, they go. And it cracks a lot more than cement. Um, and, and then you, so it's the total projects like $340,000 to do the whole thing. So we have 90 right now asking the rest. If that would be the case, then I would propose the other part of the project would be repaving, getting all the skate park stuff off, repaving that, and we could put eight pickleball courts there. And then they're in conjunction with the two already in Memorial Park. Um, but where my philosophical quandary is, if they, you know, if they say, if I get pushback, we want pickleball, but not skate park. But that's a that's a demographic we serve. And so I would have a real hard time not pushing for the skate park. You know, I'd rather put the skate park where it is than build more pickleball courts there. And so that's a conversation that I wanted to have with you guys on what your feeling is, what you think the community would, you know, because I don't want to take something away and not guarantee it's going to come back. And I, so that's my quandary. I have a hard time not utilizing, not having more than one purpose in utilizing a space. So if you have or want to put in a, you know, a skate park, area or whatever the you know the space is like it should be in a space where it could be utilized for multiple things or like instead of putting in you know pickleball ball courts put in tennis size courts that could be used for both tennis and pickleball instead of just pickleball it's like pickleball is a fad right now what happens when it dies in 10 years then you got a bunch of pickleball courts and nobody's going to use it anymore yeah i mean it's a it's it's a pretty big trend. My my and I agree and I understand the philosophy. And I'll just tell you my biggest issue right now, and I dealt with it this morning, is we have pickleball courts on our Black Point Park court, and they didn't have a net because the net's higher. And then people wanted to play tennis and it was pickleball beating weight. And tennis is actually starting to be on <laughs> tennis is starting to come back on the rise a little bit, which it's been lagging. And pickleball is maxed if not exceeded it i think we're almost at a point now where we need both and sometimes multi-purpose is multi-conflict and we see it on a regular basis and the pickleball community is very uh i mean you're gonna i think you're gonna have conflict regardless so it doesn't necessarily have to be tennis but i i think just another use multi-purpose yes yep. yep what's the use in a skate park is it pretty well used? It's pretty well used. I mean, South Portland just built a beautiful, yeah, you know, know, in ground bowl. Gorham did a little bit. So some of those kids that have vehicles, I think, are going to the newer because ours is such a disarray. I'm almost close to shutting ours down because it's getting borderline unsafe. Okay. Um, and so yeah, this that's kind of the you know, that's the issue we're facing right now there. So I think that uh, it's also a battle I really don't want to fight because I think there's a need and I think the kids use it all the time and it's walkable from the school campus and so something to do after school yeah in place of a community center that we don't have yet. yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's a hidden gem in a good quiet spot yeah, yeah agreed yeah so i guess i'm looking for some advice on if if i could do both great but if they say you can only do one we rehab the skate park and rebuild it there oh yeah you know what i mean yeah and then then deal with pickleball is a separate <laughs> issue which I'm fine with. I'm just, again, that's, that's kind of where my mind is because I don't want to take away amenities to bring amenities to another demographic right. and not support what we have. That's kind of a quandary. We don't, we don't have any data on it, but I'm there mm -hmm. two or three times a week and that skate park gets a lot of use. Mm -hmm. The pickleball courts get some use. And I'm sure at different times of the day you could flip that around, but I, I kind of feel like I probably won't use the skate <laughs> park. Come on, right? Because I like not having my arms in a cast. But I think it's important to have it there. It's a good spot for it. Yeah. I would agree. My thought is that if you replace it with pickleball, then the problem is what happens? The skate park gets left over here and then continues to get pushed away, pushed away, pushed away, and then you don't get back to it. So I, I think that you should push for keeping the skate park yeah and that's kind of what or at least and i'll and i'll 
clarify my comments. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't want to entertain putting pickleball unless I had the funds guaranteed to build the new skate barn. You know what yeah. I mean? Whether it's next to it or by the tennis courts or by the middle school, mm -hmm. like unless they were guaranteeing and we had funds to build a new skate park yeah. and then work through that process. I wouldn't want to. Is that kind of the feeling of the I group? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just, I wanted to kind of get that input from you. So thank you. Can we do that um, at community center and school too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah trying. Um, uh, one thing that we talked about last time, I had gotten a quote for indoor <laughs> holiday lighting. Um, we I put that in the budget as Tom requested, and then we both decided in our budget presentation, Tom's got to hit a certain percentage. And so things that are of value that we support but may not be able to be funded, we put on a separate slide of unfunded things for further discussion. So we pulled that $40,000 out for lights and electricity and put it in the unfunded slide. So when we go to council, we can discuss it and they can decide whether they want to put it back in like they did with a bunch of stuff last year. So it allows Tom to meet his goals. It allows me to articulate what people are asking for and what the need is. Yet we understand there's a financial implication and then you can have a good discussion. So I like the format. If, if you guys are all right with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at the bottom, I don't know why it's all the way down there, but CIP, we're proposing replacing the 2013 bus, which is starting to rust. Define CIP, please. Uh, capital Brewing Plant, sorry. No, yep. Yep. Um, and then uh, a, a pickup truck. But the pickup truck, this one we've kind of babied. Um, I wouldn't propose trading it in. I'd propose giving it to the parks ranger. So he or she had a vehicle, pick up trash, traps, do her maintenance or his maintenance. Um, better value back to us. Um, we are also looking to get a um, different type of tractor. It's called a vent track. Um, it's a small compact tractor, but it has 30 different attachments. So you can do fields, cut bushes, cut trees, rototill. Um, Casey, our existing parks manager, that's all he had in Texas. Um, so we're proposing not replacing a riding mower this year, selling a Z-Track, and then next year when our aerator's up. So it'll be about a break even this year, but in a future year, we'll be way ahead and you'll have multiple implements so we can do more and just take as much machine power. So, um, and then just really on the project list, it's just targeting deferred maintenance, striping, painting parking lots, filling ditches, painting. Um, our two new staff parks people have really allowed us. We, we'll have a report for Parks and Rec Month in July where we're going to work on a video, but also a report of all the things we've got done and things that we never would have done without the people power. So that's going well. So great. That's the that's the Cliff Notes version of the budget. Under um, operational budget, the $8,000 increase in ET to find ET, please. Oh, sorry, Eastern Trail. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the, the overflow. And it's pretty much going to be all material sand and fill crushed <clears throat> stone. So, with your uh, slide, um, I had asked Todd to get some rough oh, numbers yes, I about that. Uh, of participation that community services reaches out. And um, he gave me some numbers, again, not exact numbers, which is fine. With events like the sand. Uh, Letters to Santa, Gingerbread House, One Day Events, and things like that. They have well over 20,000 attendees. Wow. That doesn't even touch people using the Eastern Trail, um, using the athletic fields on different events, non-community um, service events. I, I would estimate it's well over 1,000 people. I mean, 100,000 people. Thousand, yeah, uh, a year, and I, I just don't think anyone really has that idea of what kind of reach community service has, and I think it should be utilized. Yeah, for in, in I never looked at it that way as far as because we look at like organic users, mm -hmm. how many we have, and it's about twenty thousand. When you talk about everybody that participates, and yeah. but it's hard to get that kind of data, you know, as far as how many people go to the parks. We are looking at some cell phone technologies. Centos really? looking at that where they can track, you know, third parties that can track users, how many people, where do they go? It's more like, hey, when I go to the beach, where do I go from here? Right? Mm -hmm. And this SACO, so when you can start looking at you can prioritize maintenance as well. So but, well, and with those numbers, it would be interesting to take the budget, do a per capita cost of all community services. Yeah. 
I mean, if you get 20,000 people that you know that's a hard number, yeah. that would be interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> so, any other questions on the budget? Good job, Todd. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah sure. Again, any questions? Happy. But I'll mm -hmm. share when we get our budget schedule because all that stuff will be oodles on meetings if you're absolutely bored and want to. Don't do that. Is the is the fiscal year January one to December thirty first? Uh, January one to June thirtieth. No, what's July one? No, sorry, July one to June thirtieth. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, Jen, yeah, July one to June thirtieth. You got me with the December, and I get you with the yeah. January. July one to June thirtieth. Okay, so we're moving on to the beach environment. Um, so we want to kind of revisit where we were last month yep. with the dog situation first. Yep. So in your packet, you have a sheet. And I we chatted about so that I would put something together for you guys to review. Again, my apologies were to have that done last week, but I was out a few days last week with some personal stuff and still catching up on things. So um it's I'm gonna put it up on the board so Roger can see it because he doesn't. So what I tried to do was um I did a lot of research. Um well let me go back. I think we, we talked about last week, we had uh, Katie Foley here from the dogs group. We've heard from Mike Slavin as far as beach environment. There's a lot of things that go on that are kind of overlapping. Um, and so, you know, some of the things we're trying to do this year, Parks Ranger, uh, and, and maybe get it to full time next year if that goes through. Uh, working with the police department, uh, we have a new animal control officer. She's fantastic. She's out and about all over the place, very visible uh, and, and very active. So that's, that's going to be a, a big thing for us. Um, and then on our end, municipally, it's just more about communication and trying to set those expectations. What I wanted to do is put something together that you guys can work off of, public can give feedback on. So I'll just go through this really quick is kind of why I put it together, because I think we decided last time, there's a lot of challenges. We talked about ordinance and rules, you know, how people understand them, how we educate them. We talked about who reports what to the police and why don't we? Um, we talked about when we have staff and when don't we have staff and how do we do the other times. Um, and then we talked about dog owners specifically, etiquette and being able to handle their dog um, and whether they understand the rules. So kind of all that kind of tag team together. So I said last time that I would kind of put this together because I firmly believe I'm personally not ready to change rules or ordinances until we know we are enforcing them properly and we've set expectations because things have in my experience, we oh, we're going to change this. But until we know what the goal is and why we want to do it, I want to make sure that we're going to do that, that we have the resources to then be able to monitor the data to say, we did it right, and it's still not working. Now we got to change something. Or you said you would help, and you didn't. You know, um, So kind of put the onus back on all of us. So this was just a way for me to put some things down on paper um, and then be able to put some educational stuff up. So the big thing here is people, pets, and public places – you know, kind of a positive spin, room for everybody to enjoy parks and beaches. That's got to be our mindset for this to work. Um, and then we work to balance that off. I tried to put a list of partners down there that I could think of that may be involved in the beach and parks. Again, uh, I'll share this doc with you tomorrow. Oh, probably Karen. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Okay. We left it a lot. Um, Gosh. She's laughing up those stairs. Yeah, she was running. Was the... She was running. <laughs> um, so we're just starting the beach environment conversation. Um, so again, I'll share this document with you. Feel free to add to it, take away, but I just listed partners there. Um, and actually, I put it right here too, so it's probably a small, slow read. Um, and I'm sharing this so Roger can see it. But So we can add to this list, but these are just partners that we want to talk about uh, purpose so we can all work towards it. Um, create an environment that promotes the comfort, the comfort and safety for all park and beach users to be considerate. And how do we do that? Um, and then I just put some things together on framework. Really, the big things was coming up with these kind of five areas to discuss. Talk about access and what that means. Um, design. So when we do something new or fixing something. Um, stewardship. How do we take care of that? Um, education and then enforcement. And so I... I don't really want to go through all these. I'll give you some time to kind of pile through these. But I just want to talk firstly about these, this off-leash area. So everything right now in Scarborough is off-leash. Okay. There's rules where you need to be on-leash or in voice control. 
So that's why I put it as off leash. We're not trying to say you can't. Everything right now is off leash in Scarborough. But what I want to do, and I was starting to think about it, there's certain areas that we don't educate on. Like, like theoretically, there's supposed to be no dogs on the athletic fields. There are dogs on the athletic fields all the time. So, and that's why I put here, um, you know, uh, develop off leash classifications to aid in education and rule compliance. So when we start talking about areas, you can be in Memorial Park with your dog. You're not supposed to be on Memorial Field with your dog. You know, um, you're not, you can be at the beach, you know, off leash running around, but you're not supposed to be in the parking lot. Off you know, how do we designate to be able to help with rule compliance? You said all of Scarborough is right now off leash. I don't understand what you mean. So we have no leash law in Scarborough. There's but it, well, at least at Higgins, you have to be on a leash at, after five with your dog. It, it, in the summer. It, right. So that's why I mean there's no leash law. There's times that you have to be on leash. And oh, I think okay. people are confused. Like you, you there's a leash law. There is not a leash law in Starbrook. There are designated times that you have to be on leash. And when you're off, it's supposed to be under voice control. So there's I, I it's it's crazy. Yeah, that's very confusing. Is that a is that a rule that's set by the town that says they have to be on leash at those designated times, but it's not a town law? It, it's not yeah it's 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 a rule but it's not an ordinance you know you know so that's why when i and when you talk about having to look at the ordinances are they meeting the needs you know uh, are the fines you know meeting the needs and are the times meeting the needs as far as this goes so other, oh i'm sorry. sorry if it's a rule yeah who is the authority to enforce it so or that's it where it ordinance? comes down to and that's so again review dog licensing <laughs> figures ensure highest rate of compliance Ensure consistency, enforceability, and relevance to the dog rules and municipal ordinances. Consider increasing resources to improve the ordinance. So kind of what I did here was just put things down here. So we say, this is the number one thing we want to talk about because that's the only way to make the ordinance and rules work. It gives us a place to start working on an action item to be able to make a recommendation. That's why I put full-time parks ranger to have he or she out there year round and working with the animal control officer on they can pick times where they're there to help the enforcement to enforce the rules. So no matter what we do, you could say, and I'm, I'm saying this on camera, no dogs off leash ever. And that's not what I'm, I'm not, I'm not suggesting. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, we don't have the resources to enforce that. We'd have the same exact problem we do now. That's what I'm trying to get to is we need to be able to set something and then be able to enforce it to really see if it works before we decide we're going to change something. And that's kind of what my mindset is. My my question yep. was, do other towns have ordinances around dogs or is it just like the rules? It, it's it's a combination. Okay. I think some are very stringent mm -hmm. and some are, are more rules. Mm -hmm. um, some I don't are, understand the difference between a rule and an ordinance. Well, an ordinance, you can write a ticket and get fined. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so rules are, are timelines. But get slept on the wrist. And so could we ask... Could that be an evaluation within itself? Should we create an ordinance instead of a rule? But this is a best. But the, there are dog ordinances. There are dog ordinances, but again, they're they're very. I think part of it's the education of it, because like you showed us, you sent us the rule about being within ten feet, and if you don't say I'm okay with it or make the gesture, now they're in violation of that rule. That ordinance. It's an that ordinance. ordinance. Yeah. Goodness. Never heard of it. How do you enforce it? Right. Who's standing there with the yellow flag? Like. 10 feet, 10 feet. you know what I mean? I appreciate that it's there, but part of this is how do we move the needle to get some more compliance to create the beach environment we want? And I, if you said that was a rule or an ordinance to me, Ellen, I would have lost that bet all day long. There was such a thing within 10 feet. Mm -hmm. Just would have, I would have said, nope, Oop, gone down the chute, lost the game. You know, never would have guessed that that was an ordinance. So I think part of it is, what do we want to accomplish and do what we does what we have presently need it and if we don't what kind of suggestions can we do but again like i started the conversation i was and i said last week is yeah i, uh, I have uh, i know that we have ordinances on dogs and some of them is when you are able to run a dog in the morning on the beaches from uh, five or whatever it is in the morning until nine, there's the ordinance in town ordinance saying that they're allowed off leash. Then the ordinance also says that from five in the, in the evening till dawn, dawn, uh, sunset, 
the dogs are on leash. That is part of that same ordinance that that would, uh, a, I think it's about a 10 year old uh, ordinance right now. Uh, so, Roger, that's really interesting. I'm wondering if we want to come up with a plan, a timeline for when we want to accomplish that. And my first question would be, can we have one document, this is the way my brain works, someone else can make a suggestion on what the rules and the ordinances are that we have already. So they're under the in one animal place. control ordinance yeah. chapter 604. 604. Yeah, that's what Ellen is saying. So this is when it was adopted and amended. <laughs> okay, so, because what I'm afraid of, when we had Katie here at the last meeting, she she had those two overwhelming binders. She said she has 10. Right? And so I don't want the committee, to Ellen's point, which is very eloquently stated, to go down a rabbit hole and repeat what's been done. I would agree. Um, so, I mean, we also have the this that the, that we created as well that I has know. all the guidelines in right. it, which already exists. So. Right, we have the data. So, I guess I'm. What are we trying to do? Right, I, that's I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. This is great, but I don't want to have. This okay, takes five more meetings again and again and well, again. And some of this stuff well, again for me is framework that I need to be working on in the background. I'm you know not. I mean? This is awesome, but I feel like we need a plan. What do we want to ultimately accomplish? So I think that's before we come up with a plan. I think to make the plan, we have to understand what are we trying to accomplish. Like, what is the ultimate goal here? And if and and if it takes time to research and or resources, like how do we ensure? that we're going to meet that. Because we're in the budget process right now, so if there's things that need to come up, that's part of it. Would a first step be trying to educate people on the current, like we're not gonna change yeah. the laws, but right. just educating on what it currently has. And to your point, what's in here is not top of mind for people. Right. So we just met with I and W. They're doing a, they're working with Virginia Tech. They're doing a, it's, it's based on plover data and they're focusing on Higgins, but my staff met with them and we're gonna to try to pull some of those resources to be able to put it ferry in at um, uh, Pine Point. Um, but we, chat, we chatted with them about how does, how, do, how does it become a positive message versus a negative message? And then how do we get the resources out there? Like Jill is working on signage right now, modeling where what are the three or four ordinances or rules that we most care about? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then on the sign says, hey, if you want to learn the rest, hit this QR code and it can bring you to the website. We've talked about the website needs to be updated. Things need to be freshened up. Uh, I've got another list and I won't bore you with it, but it's update all the materials when you register your dog. Update all the materials for when you get your speech pass. Ensure all the signage is in the proper location. Um, talking about when we have the parks ranger, he or she putting out signs at the beaches daily and taking them in. So like to be able to enforce what we have now to give you a chance to see if what we have is, was it really working if we enforce it and they're educated about it? I don't think there's anything wrong in, re I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. Sure. in revisiting the ordinance. It hasn't been touched in, in 10 years. Yeah. And so I don't know if it's useful, if it's something the committee wants to do is look at it and just be like, this is, I know I can do, we're doing a lot of like, let's consolidate ordinances right now. Let's trim this down. Sometimes too much language is, creates more issues. Really? Um, <laughs> um, so that's one of my things. I was like, there's a lot of stuff in here about dogs, like pages, about Higgins Beach. Point. I mean, dogs have to be on leash on Pine Point Beach if they are near the river. Like, and that, I mean, yeah. that's, so there's more to it. Um, so I think, Flowing wise, yeah, I think you know, just reviewing Ranger, this document, yeah, yeah, my, I can't even see that. I know, I'm sorry, no, that's okay, Jane. I, I figured we'd see have it right now. Mind. No, yeah. I know that. I think we mentioned too when people get their licenses for the dogs, something to hand to them, right? When that's people get their licenses for their dogs, it's Scarborough residents are going to the town hall for their Scarborough dogs, but yeah. the people who are coming from other towns aren't that's yeah, that's not and I, that they don't necessarily go to town hall, you can renew it online, yeah. yeah. Uh, if then, you're a Scarborough resident and yes. if you're other other areas, if you, I think any anybody across the state, you can renew a license by county online, and I don't even have to walk into town halls. Maybe we could increase the fee and send a mailer to everyone. 
But I, I wonder know. if there's a it's way to cheaper if they register in person at town hall for their dog license. I could check into the and... online registrations of it through the state and then get set to the town or does it hit the town for like the pathway? Because sometimes with those online things you can add, hey, thanks for registering. Here's your flyer. Right. Or here's That's, a link. You yeah. know, you, you go it's because it's not run by the town. I think it's by the state and you choose the county or sorry, you choose the town. That... So you can do that for dogs? Yeah, that's why I do mine. Okay. You get the, I knew you could the, do it for cars. I didn't know you could do it for dogs. The town newsletter is like, hey, register your dog. Then okay. I go to the, the state website or whatever it is, register my dog by the town of Scarborough, pay my $9 fee or something, and then I get the, the license like sent in the mail to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does nobody else have dogs here? Am I the other one? Well, I didn't pay mine in time, so I had to oh, go in person to town hall, yeah. pay the $25. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. but, and that was because the animal control officer is on the ball and she's calling yep. people. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. You right. don't have your license, you know. Go How does she know that? She's approaching you and checking your dog? She's calling you on the phone. They have, they have their phone here. for residents mm -hmm. and then dog. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so to your point on, on offline, I'm sorry, out of town, we, we talked about reaching out to OB because that's kind of across the, you get some, the trans, um, come across the, the line. What am I trying to say? You know, they come down the beach across the line. They don't even know where the line is. Mm -hmm. So they don't know where the rule's different. And then, um, uh, sorry, Cape Elizabeth is another big one to reach out to. Is there a dog's group there that we could try to do some output? And I think that's why the dog's group has to help us. If, if we want this to work, it has to be a kind of a unified approach. I wonder, the, pro the problem maybe with, registering and handing out a handout at Scarborough is, I think one of our assumptions perhaps, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that a lot of the dog problems are coming from people who are outside of Scarborough bringing their dogs in. And so it, we just have to decide if that's the approach we want to take. Mm -hmm. Then we have to say, look at our assumptions about that. Because gotcha. it might not, if our assumption is it's out of town dogs. So create strategies for <clears throat> residents and then how do we tackle education out of town? And yeah, and probably a lot of that is your signage. Yeah. Very visible signage at the beach, which where they go to pay at the entrance where they go to pay. Or even or the walkways yeah. where right, they go. The in. walkways yes. right there. The challenge in Scarborough is Pine Point has 40 entrances to I know. Beach. Uh, ferry's good. We have we have one or coming into Pine Point. So we ferry's usually pretty controlled because again, uh Penny's husband is one of our beach supervisors and Taft was one of our long time. They've got that locked down. Like that, well, they, well, maybe we use during the beach season, maybe when someone pays, you hand them a piece of paper when their car pulls in. Maybe they are they didn't bring their dog that day, but they're going to come back in the wintertime and walk their dog. Yep. So it's plastering the information. But I think to Karen's point, maybe we review step this. back and review what the rules are and the ordinances. And now that we know what the difference is, because... Yep. I think we all know that we want the beach to be safe and comfortable for right. anyone who uses that. That's our ultimate goal. Yeah. Forgive me if I'm misspeaking or correct me if no, I'm not. That's great. So review this and then see if there's any differences that you feel strong enough to propose alternate language. Or, or clarify. Or pertinent clarify. anymore. Yeah. yeah. Pertinent. And then from my side, hopefully identify solutions. Like if you pick out something here, we could go to PD to ask for clarification, or we could talk with my beach staff or park staff to say, we just don't have resources, or this is our pinch point to be able to actually act on it after this. And do you want to reach out to the dog group to see if they want to do the same kind of review and if there's any yeah. comments or questions they have? Yeah, I was supposed to meet with Katie prior to this last week, but she had an appointment change, and so we didn't get to kind of sit down on this. So um, also, yeah, I'm fine with that. In the data we collected, about other towns. I just think that's also in good information to use because from reviewing that, I think we found that we are the least restrictive yep. town and therefore people from other towns are coming to our town. And so maybe that's where we clarify our assumption that a lot of these problems maybe are being caused by other I think that's towns. why you need to read the ordinance because yeah. I think it has changed. Yeah. And I think other towns have clearly changed their rules and ordinances yeah. and we have not. Right, yeah. Is there only one? And What's that? ordinance yeah everything for the animal control is under this 604 <laughs> so there's like public safety is 600 and then there's a couple under public safety mm -hmm. and one of them is so the, but the only one that we are specifically looking at is animal control which addresses dogs at, at yeah, is that it, correct dogs and oh, beaches yeah. and parks yeah beaches and parks yeah, okay. any public space. animal yeah all animals so Todd, you had 
suggested that before we start, we think about what it is that we're trying to accomplish. And but what we're trying to accomplish is to create an environment that promotes the comfort and safety of all park and beach users. And we've had some discussion and some reports that not everybody that's using the beach feels comfortable and safe. And so we've been having a conversation for maybe six months or a year now. And we are making some progress, actually. There still seems to be some confusion and forgetfulness, especially on my part, about what the ordinance does and does specifically say. And so it's probably a good idea if we all actually did a refresher on the ordinance and make sure that we can understand it and see if there are ways that we can simplify it. I did notice that shortly after we had this discussion, I don't know, a couple of months ago, there was a post on the public safety Facebook page and they took a lot of heat, but it was useful. There was some good discussion about what the rules are and how, you know, it highlighted some of the issues on both sides, but there was discussion and there was some education. And so I think we have to call that some progress. We have a park ranger coming on and the park ranger is going to be at the forefront of our cooperation, if you don't want to call it enforcement. But the park ranger ought to know what we probably need to know as well, what, which is what is the rule and where exactly does the line between feeling uncomfortable and unsafe versus having your dog and in, in, in the person that's walking the dog and running the dog have an enjoyable experience too. And so these things I don't think are mutually exclusive. I actually do believe we can accomplish both, but we do have to know what the ordinance is. And so I think we all need time to read that and try to, I don't know, Karen, maybe we could make it more succinct and clear. I know sometimes we write things trying to accommodate every constituency and you end up writing a treatise that, my gosh, you can't even read when we get done with Oh, well, my comment for this will be what's going to be on the next discussion is I feel like consistency is important. Like, right, I mean, you know, this this is breaking down beaches and rivers, and I mean, that is mm -hmm. very detailed. Right. Uh, so we talked about uh, when you had talked about your experiences with the dogs, and you had said call city hall and tell them, and they report mm -hmm. it. There's a list of all of the reports of call the police. Call the, the police. So oh, okay, public safety. Uh, um, am I imagining something that there or no? Let me rephrase. Uh, the the list of all of the complaints that come from things happening at beaches, is there information or data saying what the causes of those are? Yeah, and so I broke those down a little bit and shared a little bit with you. You have to go through manually, and we also talked about working with PD before the summer to recode, because they put dog in it versus code one being dog bite or code two being lost dog. Like, you have to go re read through it says dog, and you have to read every narrative to say mm -hmm. that it was lost, versus having some, mm. when they key it in, lost dog, boom, well, there was 30. Mm. My dog's loose and get away from me is running across the dog. Mm. That's not a dog on the beach, that's a lost dog. Versus me letting, mm. unclipping my dog and ignoring the rule. Um, I guess I wanted to know what the percentage was of dog incidences versus every other type of incident. Like On if, the beach? Well, like we didn't have much, a beach right? environment. We talked about was, that was, a little bit because most people don't come. Right, but, uh, but what does exist, like, yeah. is it of the problems that exist on the beaches, is it like, you know, 80% dog, 20% stranger danger, 10% trash? Like, what do we know what that breakdown uh, looks yeah, like? Yeah, I only pulled the dog calls. I only pulled the dog code calls. Okay. We'd have to I, dig I, in. I have problems. a suggestion. Um, <laughs> if, if I, I think uh, the suggestion that I have right now is to get uh, Jamie Finch here with us next time or whenever so she can explain the ordinances and what what is involved in these ordinances and how they get them so that we're familiar with the ordinances based on what's going on at the beach and yeah. the next suggestion that i have is uh, enforcement has to be around and I will say that for many years, we had had no enforcement on the beach. Now we have a new a new animal code. And from what I've seen, she's around and uh, will, you know, she's got the book to, to, to put out tickets. 
And I think uh, when we also have the Ranger program going, that they should have a book to uh, to people that go off of these things. And the biggest thing that we can have is uh, uh, enforcement and, and uh, education in having both we and the non-dog people and the dog people enforcing the ordinances that we have. Well, I, again, that's kind of what Rick, Rick succinct about the whole thing is yep. that I yeah. think that you're right. Reviewing the, I reviewing think we need to do that. See if everything's current, right? And and if there's when you're reviewing it, please highlight priority pieces because I think what I'm trying to hearing now is that it's a massive document in the sense of how dense it is. How do we when we make signs or pitch marketing campaigns, we highlight those high level impactful things versus you know don't go on this crook of the river. You know, like you want to read that here it all is, but knowing that here's the top, you no, know, the big ticket things, because again, there's rule breaking, whether it's uneducated or choice, and then there's dog etiquette behavior, which is owner based. Right. And those like your incident of getting in my circle, even though you may be on the beach and be allowed to be there unleashed, I still don't want your dog jumping on me. And so there's two different campaigns we have to have here, educating to understand when the rules and why they're there, but then also how you behave during either time, off leash, on leash. So to keep this moving yeah. along, um, I since we only meet every other month, can everyone review them and come prepared with your highlights to talk about them at the meeting next time, at the next meeting, so we don't spin wheels reviewing them? Mm -hmm. Um, just a question, question before you go on up. Uh, so if, if we find stuff where we're like, this is an issue, whatever this is, how do we get the ordinance changed? So hmm. Karen's part of that crew. <laughs> is there an ordinance committee? Yeah. So what you would do is we would get together, we would make all the recommended changes, and then we would go to the ordinance committee. Um, you know, I would obviously ask Trish to come and then we always like to have anyone who comes to support it and I could come as well. And you just kind of explain it. I mean, this is a hot topic. So, I mean, that's be prepared that like, if we were going to do that, I mean, I think we should, but I mean, that's, that's how it works, but this will definitely be vetted a lot. And I think you guys know what you're up against, but I think we need to do this, but that that's what would happen. So if we're like, we think these changes should be made, have that prepared, go to the committee, present it to them. And then they would either say yes or no. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then it, and it, then it would be changed. They would deliberate it. And then the, the final and vote then it goes, goes to council, council for first reading, for second reading. And so they would maybe essentially either agree with what we've said or with edits to it, and then whatever they come up with goes to town council, and the town council has to approve it. Yeah. And they okay. do public, so they do first reading, so anybody can come public for or against any change. It's like a four month process. And this would have again. I mean, there's going to be a lot of pushback with this, so I would have to say we have to be very, very sure that we have it the way we want it before we go forward. And again, well, my earlier comment is, what's the accomplishment of changing it? Like, what are we trying to gain by? It? We want to make everyone feel as comfortable as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So if people push back, it's that sort of, yep. but we, I think it was really, the committee did a really nice job in collecting all that information from all the different towns and Please. shout out to you, Roger, because you did a lot of that. <laughs> you did. Um, can we create another document like that? I can set it up if we want or put it in the file so that yep. as we're going through it individually, you can have access to it. And yep. if we, all of us between now and the next month say, oh my God, we don't like this clause. And then I may highlight and go read that because Trish said, oh, I don't understand this or I don't like it. Right. I'd go into specific. So that can that inform our discussion and we can jump right into that next month. Do you want more, me to set up? I'm on it right now. Okay. The, the more information we can provide right up and, and provide the council, the town council, is our best way to go so mm -hmm. that they have the ammunition to get back to the, the people, the whether it's the dogs or the beach people, the fishermen come up, well, you can't do this and that. They have the answer, and uh, it would the ordinance would be going through a lot quicker. That's what well, I'm saying. Also, we need to time. provide them with as much information right. so well, that I, even the data that we collected on what other towns are doing 
ultimately yep. will be helpful as well. So we've, we've got a great start. I think you start. guys are definitely on point of what you, I think you're doing the research and the legwork that needs to be done. Council, some of them go back and watch these meetings. They they will dive into your box and they will look at all the documents that you're editing and some of them just do that. We'll be also be able to see what happens this summer too, because this is going to take yeah. time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we'll be able to, if there's, if there's hot button topics or points you really want to emphasis with staff or the ranger, and try to, like Rick said, some of these things are coming, which hopefully should move the needle a little bit, you know what I mean? And then, okay, what's working and what's not? And is it a rule or is it just enforcement or is it both? Um, okay, so I think we kind of resolved that to kind of keep the needle moving along. Yep. Um, we talked about, we got like 20 minutes, yep. parking, and I, Penny was kind enough to be here. So parking, we've got that proposal. Are we probably... Um, What's the proposal? Sorry. Tabling a discussion of the fees at this point. I think we don't have the capacity to deal with changing fees at this moment. I, I, but is the does that mean that what the council did last summer, which is thirty to thirty dollars on the weekends, is staying? If we don't make a recommendation, then that would stay unless they decide to change it on their own, which they, they could. They could. And do you have a sense of what the fee like? How does the council feel about that change? Feel better. I mean, I don't know how the council feels. My conversation with Todd this week was like I. I think we've seen an example of the council making a decision and not understanding the consequences of it. I don't I, think I, we have enough information. Absolutely any not. I, I feel like I will I will say this that I feel like this parking document came out of I can't say, but the repercussions of we raised speak for thirty dollars at nine point and people didn't want to pay it. They but but they were seeing was more people parking at the co-op. But really what the issue is, is the same issue we had before and it's enforcement. I will tell you, I was told that the police actually would not issue tickets at the co-op. So this is where I'm going, I'm having a hard time with this because they created a whole new document in response to not having enforcement. Where we're going, we're not gonna change the dog rules. Let's let's try to enforce what we have first. I feel like this is a reaction to a lack of enforcement, but it goes beyond the co-op where I'm going. This is not just the co-op. They now want to implement paid parking throughout Pine Point. I actually have, a, I feel really bad for the residents. I think I personally worry that the $30 fee did negatively affect the people who live in that neighborhood where like, a lot was probably not full and people were squeezing on the streets and driving to the co-op. And I mean, I also think the way, I mean, maybe we don't have time to talk about this today, but the way it was rolled out, there needs to be better education and better signage. And so it's hard to say what, like if we did it this year or some year in the future and it was cleaner and there was more signage and residents were encouraged to get their pass. So they weren't, you know, it's hard. It's just hard to make any real so, decision so based I, on because I was just going to say that it's a huge issue. Yeah, I feel better. Thank you. Thank um, you. And we Penny started. <clears throat> you, you raise an interesting question, Ellen. We don't have time to do the whole parking discussion. And this is huge. This is and actually definitely. it's interesting your comment because this involves more enforcement than correct. What was That's that? Why actually I think you need to take a grain salt. My but hold on one thought. Yeah. Since we're running out of time. Thirty dollars is an issue. That's what I'm hearing is the most problematic. Can the committee make a decision and a recommendation to the town council just on the $30 thing? Because that's what we're hearing from the beach people and table the rest of the parking. Or is that, I, I know you don't, we should do it in a more comprehensive way, but now is the time for the beach fees, right? Yeah, I think you can do anything you feel you want to. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you to do something or not do something. I think what I don't want to see us do is do something that we haven't really thought out and what the consequences because in the same example of cancer they did 30 but they didn't realize that we, we did it in may so we didn't have time to change everything we were changing signs when we were open there was like a, a printer right like yeah. sign we were changing signs when we were open Definitely. and so when people showed up that's what yeah. part of penny yeah. and the whole beach staff okay. is so they were so I think, and, and we've talked in the past about how town residents feel like they can't get into the beaches so there is a piece of this that needs to be rationed so it's not that the th I don't I just don't think we should be saying like okay the $30 didn't work it needs to go down I think we need to if we're going to increase the fees it needs to be with education and with you know better signage and things because there's still there's a lot of issues but one of them is like I hear from residents all the time they can't get into the beaches and so the $30 all I don't know how to simplify it so we're making progress on the and I love your glass half full 
by attitude. We're making progress on the dog. The parking sounds to me like it's as big an issue as the dogs. I think it's bigger. Okay. But I think it's less. Um, I less at the last. I didn't. I watched the meeting from last whatever January, and your comment was I again with the dogs with this. I feel like what might be helpful for this board, and this is just my opinion or my thoughts, was that for you guys to look at parking as a whole in the town as a consistency as in okay we have a parking issue in pine point how do we deal with parking throughout the town right i want consistency again right. so when people come to scarborough they know that every beach costs the same that every place they park costs exactly the same not consistent right now at all and i think that's where i'm going my thought was maybe this came out of a lack of enforcement i feel like and that we have a moral population and in response to the 30 dollars, should we just look at park parking holistically more on a bigger scale. Yes, I think this committee agrees with that. Um, it should be in okay. this because this committee is only if only in charge of the co-op. And I understand they're trying to address the issue as a whole, but I'm going, well, let's give the co-op a year to actually enforce it. Because I and I'm the police department is before me next month for budget season. I am going to have so many questions about dog enforcement and parking. I cannot wait to come back to you with all the answers. Because I have a lot of questions, like a lot, because we have really big issues that are happening here that are not being addressed. Well, they're becoming hot button topics. They are. And this, just so you know, this was, again, them looking at the co-op and the cause and effect of certain things. And then, the, you know, with the lack of enforcement or consistency in that, this spurred up. This wasn't for them to say, hey, come make $30. They're talking about charging it all the side lots, implementing right. fees and machines, right. so having all the systems unified. But that's a big lift. But the the raising the daily rate for non-residents shouldn't be as contentious because we're primarily a Scarborough resident. We're, we're, we have to prioritize the Scarborough residents. That's right. that's so, the, that's the balance. You yeah. know, that's the that's the hard balance in this. Where again, I don't want to sound ill-willed, but if a resident goes get the forty dollars beach pass, it doesn't matter. But I do, and for these guys, right. I feel for Penny and our staff because. Right. You know, you show up with your three kids and you go to the beach and you I get know. 10 bucks in your pocket, you're like, oh my God, it's cost 30. You got to turn around the whole care. Well, that's again, education. You put it on the website, you put yeah, it in the press. Know. What all this place is. And it goes back to the document where like Old Orchard Beach is charging $300 for a non-resident and we're right. charging 150. So of course right. they're coming to our beach and they're disappointed right. when they see a fee change right. of what they expect. And um, the document said Biddeford charges 245. And right. so again, we're having people from other communities come to use our valuable resources and sometimes at the expense of our residents. Mm -hmm. I but, think we only meet every other month and these are I very know. big topics. So yeah. unless people are willing to meet more often, yeah. we ca we came to a good spot of what we need to do for dogs. We need to do that first and then move on to parking. Agreed. Okay. I, just, I, like I, I, I don't no. disagree with you, but I think we need to do one first and then, fact, and then move on. Yeah. So I was specifically tasked by the council chair for this committee to review this document. I'm not sure who tasked the beach environment per se, but I, as a new somewhat counselor, the chair specifically emailed me this and said, bring this to your committee. Who's the chair? Uh, Nick McGee. Okay. So I do feel I have, I need, I need to go back with him with something. The, I mean, this committee is another committee just like us. They spent eight months on this. Can so you I, tell them that we feel that dogs are a bigger issue and want to address those um, first? Uh, so I think <laughs> I, 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 I can I can answer you from my own standpoint. Yes. Yeah. Not on behalf of the committee. But here's what I think. Community service is charged with an extremely large and broad constituency. Okay. We have people that well, Art was just saying we might have 100,000 user hits yeah. in the course of a year. Yeah. Now, some of those happen at the beaches, and some of them are at pickleball courts, and some of them in the skateboard park. Yeah. We have a very big, expansive responsibility. And I do feel that consistency is, is important, but I think we also have to be mindful of the fact that we have a lot of people that do come here from neighboring communities, and I, I, I feel bad for a kid that a young family that lives in a, a town nearby who brings their kids to the beach and can't really afford it. And so, I don't think we should focus exclusively on the residents of Scarborough because we're part of a bigger community than that. 
But we have so many issues that we have to deal with. We have to deal with raking the beach and picking up broken beach chairs off the beach, off the beach and trash. I mean, multiple trash barrels that community service staff have to go and empty. We have to deal with maintaining parking lots and bathrooms that tend to overflow. We have to deal with maintaining facilities that some of us don't, just don't even think about. Kayak racks and snack bars and it, you know, exhaust systems on a, on a concession. I think that the beach parking fees are an important element because it does two things. It helps to mitigate the cost to the taxpayers and it puts a little bit of the burden on the people who are using the service. And it also serves to ration a scarce facility, which is parking. Without it, you know, everybody in Southern Maine is gonna come to Pine Point or Higgins. And so we have to have some tool to, to help ration that and the price does that. But our position on this is First of all, informed community service has an, has a staff with accounting responsibility. We have financial controls and in cash boxes. We're, we're trying to deal with how to transfer, how to to shift from cash to uh, electronic credit cards or whatever. And so those are fairly complex and challenging issues. And I I think that. The community service department has an enormous capability and, and frankly, a, a good track record at, at handling it, given the challenges that are involved in it. So, so I think carving the parking out, it, it, it's convenient, but I don't think it gives credence. I don't think it gives enough attention to the to the other issues. I think that that the maintenance and enforcement. I mean, we're going to put a park ranger on the, a beach ranger on the beaches, and a lot of that's going to be a cost. And so, you know, part of the parking fees will have to support that. And there are issues of maintenance for the fishing pier, the commercial fishing pier, the, the foot pier that are very, very important. I, I absolutely think that it's important to, to get that redone so that it's available to use. But I think that it's a big picture and to carve out a small section of that, it's just not probably accommodative enough of the other challenges that we, we have to deal with. So my feeling is we've, I think that the community service and, and the advisory board has done the best job we can. And I think it's been pretty good over the years. And so, I, I don't I don't think that it ought to be carved out. I don't think that it ought to be taken that one element taken away. There's so many other things that community services deals with. I just I believe that it's better in the on the campus of the entire program, all of the controls and infrastructure that we have to deal with. Who handles parking outside of the beaches? Like where? Like the rest of the town. Like on PD. Pine Point Road. Yeah, any anything outside of our three lots, PD would be the enforcement. But so this solution is saying parking throughout Pine Point. That's why this is before the board because this is- But the, some of this isn't our responsibility. No, I'm. I, this was tasked from town council to say, wow, they have an issue going on at the co-op and now they want to spread parking and they want to talk about parking at Pine Point. Maybe we should look at this as a whole and talk about the repercussions of the fees, access. And, and like, I'm wondering, you know, who's talked to residents about this stuff? And maybe this committee isn't the right one, but there is no committee. Well, there's a Pine Point Neighborhood Association. Yeah. That's yeah. not a town committee, though. And I guess my I, other question was... I don't know that we should somewhat to wrong. I, Roger's agree. point. I don't know that we're. I understand that the town council has asked us to look at that, but I guess our response would be that we are looking at parking from the beach standpoint, but this goes beyond our purview. So if we come with a new fee recommendation, I think my fee recommendation, the response you'll get from me is: should we should we be re looking at parking down at Pine Point? 
as a whole. The fee recommendation is to be consistent across the town and involving those entities. Right. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, Scarborough Community Services, PD, and another entity that helps control that, that that's what the recommendation is, is not to have this be a separate thing amongst its own. It's to, it's to be consistent. So I guess, should I go back to council and say this committee does not want to speak to parking? No, it's the opposite. I think we should, I think we well, are I, the I, ones that should be dealing with it. But, but I thought you were saying you didn't want well, to address Well, no, but it. I think... We don't want to address it specifically at point. No, I don't want you to either. Right. And I think that was a conversation I had with the chair, Nick McGee, was I was saying this has not been their privy per se. I was like, can I bring it up a little bit? And so say, I think Let's we've got about... a little bit of confusion. I hope that this is not asking for them to take over our parking lot. We would still be ultimately in charge of our parking. So all that revenue could go to offset our operations. Reading this, it was about putting parking in every open space outside of our parking lot. And I guess my thing, my question, Nick and the board would be is tell me what your intent is. Tell me what your ultimate goal is. Because, because one, yeah. if you're not going to, if you're, if you can as a board, would comfortably say we would support adding fees because there was a big access with that. I mean, big issue with access. And when you charge more fees, it creates access issues. And so that was why we did the master plan because we were talking about doing Pine Point and reducing the number of parking spots. And so I guess my question would be is what's your ultimate goal? And are you really considering fees? Because then this board, I'd be comfortable working with, go back and say, okay, here's the challenge implementing. Are the fees going to match ours? Do uh, you need machines and you need enforcement? Like we can tell you all the challenges to implement it um, and then put fees to it, but that's a monumental workload if they're not even going to consider supporting it. I mean, that's, that's my fear is that it's months of work to not be implemented because you're talking about all of Grand Ave, you're talking about uh, along the side streets, every open spot would be potentially metered. Well, and I, again, I, this could all be quashed at the budget season. I mean, I just, I, I'm really curious about the PD's response to enforcement. I don't think it's the responsibility of this committee to speak on anything outside of the beaches. Agreed. Therefore, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Therefore, a consistent uh, plan across the town needs to be decided first. And then when it gets to the beaches, we can offer a recommendation on what we think the prices should be, and that should be it. Well, and, and I will add to that exactly what Todd said. Not all of this falls within our purview, but it will impact our decision-making on beach fees. Yeah. So our comment is we're not wrestling with beach fees this year, now. Slowly. Um, <laughs> because we time resources and we think it's a bigger issue and we're d addressing it underneath the environment and but we're willing to work with this group or the town or the council whatever as they proceed with this whole plan which is bigger than us does that make sense such a hard answer yeah i i agree with dealing uh with uh just the, the the park owned parking area, let the town come up with some of the street stuff because it can be quite confusing. Uh, I know uh, 20 years ago, they wanted to put parking just like what you recommended, make squares all over the place. And uh, we, they found out through Tom that, uh, or through, through our beach committee, uh, Higgins Beach Association, that the streets, at Higgins Beach belong to the homeowners. Wow. And, and it, you can go look at that and you'll find uh, other things uh, that that's wrong. And we have a transportation committee uh, uh, the town does here and the, the parking should be going to them to, to resolve these problems. We, I think dealing with uh, the beaches and the parks is where we should go. Ms. Chairman, I, I don't mind being part of the solution. I just, I think I would need a little more clarification what they want us to respond to because there's like 16 different things here. Right. 
There's a lot here to say. I, I, you know what I mean? Um, my response is this seems like a co-op issue that spread it outside of the co-op and this, this board is not prepared to speak to this direct document. Yes. That would be my yeah. right. I, What I would like to then further say is like maybe this board or another committee or multiple committees can look at parking as a whole throughout the town and maybe reevaluate altogether. Um, something right. has to be done. I mean, fees are going to go up no matter what. Ferguson was wild. It was. Um, and I think we learned our lesson there. I don't, but. So I, I feel like the co-op and the herd doc ought to be coordinated. I, I think we, should, I think community service should take over the co-op parking. Well, they were, they were in charge of it before. It's, it's a very different parking lot. Yes, yes it it's, is. It's, and you know, because you have a boat there. It's I very different. It's very different access. And that's where I feel, again, I think the PD needs to step up and start enforcing it before we start. And before we go down that road, if we're saying that this is bigger than us, I think we have to be careful that right now this lay lies with the co-op. We have to be careful. Well, on... we used to, the community service used to take care of the co-op. We used to, there hasn't ever been paid parking there, but we have talked about it for a few years now, more than a few. Yeah, we gave up when I had my third year here. I... Robbie, the chief at the time, took it back from me because we were having enforcement issues. Because okay. you had a harbor master. Yeah. And my guys that were in the shoes of people that were in the booth were having a hard time enforcing the parking lot because there is no paid parking, but there's sticker parking. So you buy your launch fee, whether you're a mm -hmm. resident or a or a commercial uh lobster man. And so there's certain areas. And so that takes enforcement. And so my pitch was. Unless I was going to be in charge of the harbor master, he or she, right. and being able to enforce and having more resources, it, it's it's hard to do. Okay, so I'm going to toss that, and also in the interest of time, keep this moving. I'm going to toss that back. What they just said, yep. the history is, it's unclear whose responsibility it is. And if community services does not have direct responsibility right now, we that needs to be resolved before we go into the parking, well, right? We, just have, we do trash and bathrooms. That's our responsibility. PD and the harbor master in charge of... Uh, managing the lot. Well, I'm going to be asking the police this budget season. We're giving them a chance, the park ranger, the police, to enforce what we currently have. And then I want them to sit in front of me and say, we can't do it. Then, then well, also maybe. Also, we can find out if they, someone said they can't do tickets, and I find that hard to believe. If they can't, how do we change that so they can? Uh, they can't do tickets at the co-op? So, there's a lot of licensure thing, where you park, why you can. This, so I think there's probably, again, some review that has to be done of and again, will it stick? There's too many players for us to comment on this. I, I think maybe that's part of the reason this came here was to say this is bigger than any of us and this is beyond the scope. I, I, the minute I got this, I was like, this is way beyond the scope of Coastal Yes, Waters it is. Today. And it's way beyond our scope. Um, yep. And so. Okay. So does that give you enough? So I think that's can... fine. Yep. Thank okay. you. Um, all right. Do you have an update on the ad hoc committee? I'll just tell you where we're at. We are... Um, we're at the process right now where strategically we were looking at town owned properties, see if, if the building perspective right now, we're looking at a uh, roughly 80,000 square foot building model. They talked last about a two story, which shortens the footprint and a certain amount of parking spaces. So right now the committee is ranking the spaces on campus to see what order. And then UTL, our consultant will put that model on top to see if it even fits. And so we'll know that at our next meeting on the 21st. And then we're working with UTL and it's, and I got to send the note out the way of confirmation. We will have an open house at the end of April for people to come in and get feedback on the design, the site choices. If the sites on campus don't work, then this becomes a longer, harder process because then we'd have to look for funding in, in a site off campus privately owned because their goal is really to stay connected to the schools. Um, so that's where that process is at. Everything's building up to an April open house to be able to bring the public in to say, hey, like this, don't like this. But they've been strategic in putting an operational cost together, which we have, holding a revenue projection together, which we have. The next thing would be um, giving us a build cost so you can have all three pieces and then the public could have that opportunity to pull that number around. Um, and they're all connected. They don't move equally, if that makes sense, as far as you don't lower the square footage and cut operation equally and then revenue equally as well. So um, 
that's where they're at. And that'll be the review for next Thursday. I think that's the 21st. And then they'll give them three weeks for the open house, four weeks to manage and advertise for an open house that hopefully bring folks in to say what it's about, what they like, don't like. To confirm what you just said, the committee is looking at currently town owned properties that fit an 80 square foot facility. Yeah, so their goal was to be as close to campus. So right now they're evaluating four sites. Um, on three are on campus, tennis basketball court, which they eliminated. Um, Define on campus. Tennis basketball courts, which they eliminated because when they looked at it, it's too much wetland. Um, the park shop, ice rink area, Wentworth Field, um, Memorial Park soccer field area. Uh, and then they were looking at Black Point Park because that's the closest park mm -hmm. that is flat. And so they're going to evaluate those and then see. And if it doesn't fit or sometimes cost of replacing or where other things go or impact. You lose a field, you lose a building, like what do you do? So, but the goal was to work through this process, vet them, remove them, accept them, to spend when we have to go to council and say, okay, we need to start looking outside. Do you agree with that? That would be the next step if on campus doesn't work. Um, does the 80,000 include parking? Yes, well, no, 80,000 square Definitely. foot building, it's about 20,000 square feet in parking. So about 250 stalls. Was that a yes or a no? Yes, Eighty thousand no. does not include park. Does not include park. Yeah, okay. does not. It's about twenty square foot thousand foot feet. No, and is that on the timeline to approve for the November ballot, or is it all tied up with it's the school? It's all in the air right now. It's we're trying yeah, to meet our school. charge to get stuff done by mm -hmm. by our our charge and be able to bring the council in this budget process for their decision on how we move forward. Because it's going to all get messy with the schools. Our goal is to have it sho shovel ready. After them. And have shovel ready and then to make choices okay. based on what timelines great okay that's the update thank you last two points does anybody want to be secretary <laughs> it says trish next to it no it's <laughs> not yeah. to bring up that's trish a, a need to bring the agenda um is there still a person nice missing try. from this because i thought last time we talked we were getting oh, two new committee have, members did someone roll off patricia's moved on yeah. she's filled the uh first uh, yeah but there's another yeah we have a vacancy still in the second we do we do Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any what? interest in being a secretary? Yeah. I will do that. Awesome. Yeah. All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Yes. We have a vacant. Emily, we so Emily so has no. such, uh, such a great <laughs> format that if you night. just turn it, all you have to do is change the date and a few things. What's his name? Awesome. What's his name? And awesome. thank you, everyone, in the next huh. meeting. You oh, see the meetings right. on the agenda. I'm just saying. So the next meeting is May not quickly while we're here. Um, in terms of agenda setting, we talked about dogs, the ordinance, the rules. Do we want to invite? Roger said, do we need to invite anybody there? The ordinance woman. Oh, so Jamie's in charge of the plumber ordinance, but yeah. she's not in charge of ordinances. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so we're going to do dog, review the dog ordinance and rules. Prior to the next meeting. And then at the meeting, but in terms of agenda items, we were going to talk about, we'll flesh that out. Yep. Um, and we were going to talk, start to begin to talk about volunteer recruitment. Mm -hmm. I think that would yeah. be if you have time. I know that's a, that's. And that may have to be. Should we push? Should we stick with the beach environment, which involve? Oh no, we're not doing parking until the fall. Yeah, right. Parking. But that's already May. You only have what two? I know that's other what meetings? I'm saying. Like, so, so, so when right. should we do parking so that it's ready to go for the next year? Well, I think parking. When it comes to fees, I think what are we charging and why? Not to be philosophical, yeah, but no. like if you know, like you know, when you charge thirty, it's 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 helps residents get to the beach because not everybody's going to pay thirty to come. So it kind of balances, you know, the non-resident fees. So I think we have to analyze that data. So that, maybe for the data? September twelfth, you all collecting okay the non-resident fees, those type of things. So do we want to start that conversation like in July? Yes. Have the follow up in September. Because you'll have beach data. Yeah, because I'd like to be able to then say, here's the amount of passes we had. This is the stuff. Here's the impact the ranger had. Because in my mind, if all of a sudden we get to council and they're like, we don't want to put that eighty thousand dollars on there, I'm going to go. I'll raise eighty more thousand dollars to fund this under the beach budget. Yep. And that's okay. kind of what I'm looking at. Okay. Because this again, and then how does that work? And so then okay. we can come back and say, okay, we sold ten thousand day passes and five hundred season passes. 
we raise that by five dollars and that by two, we get eighty thousand dollars. Okay, so uh, just to kind of have a plan for the year, so parking fees will be July, September, along with anything else. Yep. We're going to do dog focus on the dog and maybe come up with a plan like enforcement, education. What are our next yep. steps? And, and we're just, working on that piece now. That's what this green sheet is for us to start. Yep, flipping through to try to make a difference. And volunteer recruitment only if we need to, but actually some volunteer recruitment could be potentially. And partnerships could be embedded in our work, right? The dog group is a group. Yeah. Yeah. So dogs and beaches for May 9th, parking fees for July 11th, uh, volunteer recruitment for September, and whatever is remaining for yeah, November. I'm sure something else will come up, but at least to have some kind of plan. Because <clears throat> this may resurface the parking that you asked us to look at. Did we cancel last year's July meeting? I think, I we, think did. we did. Yeah. We, did. We, met. we didn't have a forum. But then we met with town council and then we canceled the next week's meeting. So we also right, we did have a meeting in July. We, that's right. We went in yeah, that. Because we met on Thursday to do the master plan acceptance and then we did. Well, Maybe it was August. I don't remember. No, it, was your goal. it was this summer. It was your goal. Yeah, right. It was a summer meeting. We did have it a summer meeting. It does feel like we don't have enough time to discuss all these things, but I also don't want to add another I, meeting. I know. You can always so, add a meeting. <laughs> I can't. The other thing we too, could make them longer and not at a meeting, so it's the same day. I'd rather do that. We're here already, and we could just does it like if we make it a it's our it's an hour and a half. Of, we make it another hour and a half, you know, and we designate the first chunk to said item, and then at the eight, end time, two hours, so, attention span. Right. right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So that that first you know bit is, and then once you hit seven o'clock, that you're done over. You move on to the next thing. We could make yeah. the May 9th meeting six to eight. Cool. I mean, we're here. It's already quarter right. right. I, mean, exactly. I think you should meet every month, but that's just me because I, I have so many meetings. I don't want to, but I agree. I know. Mm -hmm. It's really tricky. I get it. There's always going to be stuff to talk about. It's just how much we want to invest in passing those items, the the, the passing those items along to, to get them we situated. Could, we could do the homework between each meeting. That's I like that. Every yeah. other yeah. month and we have assignments like this. I think that you guys are on the right track by setting more realistic goals and kind of shortening the timelines and skewing assignments. So I think our workload should flow better mm. than we have just doing that. So, um, All right. And Emily, will you remind people send with the manager just remind them that we Sorry, created yeah. that document yeah. that people can dump ordinance comments into. Yeah, you and you okay, Patricia, on the, the Google Drive mm -hmm. that you created. I think you 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 already have access and and see stuff. Have you seen anything yet or not? No, no I have, okay. I know that I have access. But I okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Have fun, yeah. Roger. Great. Thank you. I we'll will. Some... Oh, yeah, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Everyone. Good yep, Let me Great. shut this off. Penny, thank you, Penny. Well, it's been interesting, Penny. and thank you. Okay, hang on a sec. Stop video. How do I stop this recording? <laughs> Pause, stop recording. It's right next to the shared screen. Thank yep. you. Put my glasses on. Sure.